All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about the customizer, and then I'm going to go inside of WordPress. So the, in 2015, WordPress told all the designers, theme developers, you need to put your theme options in what's called the customizer. And the reason why is they're tr they want to standardize the way people have their WordPress experience. So once you get a theme installed, you'll go into the customizer to make it custom to you. And there's two ways to find the customizer in the admin under appearance, customize, or in the top toolbar, there's a shortcut. So this top toolbar is great because it has shortcuts for you to make developing sites much faster. So once you get into it, and I'll go in there, customize your theme, this is sort of what it's going to look like. Now, what I'm doing is I'm doing, I'm doing two sessions, the themes and the customizer together. So I wanted to give you the PowerPoint now and then go into the back end. If what I'm talking about doesn't make sense, remember what I said earlier, that keep going forward if things don't make sense, the more you go forward, the more stuff behind you makes sense. I can come back to this if anybody needs me to, but I'll just explain this now. So this is the classic WordPress editor. And when you start typing or writing in, this is what it's gonna look like. There's things called these page builders, and when Matt gets here, he's going to be talking about Gutenberg, which is an, a new form of the editor. So the classic WordPress editor, that's where you edit, that's where you type your words in, you format, that's where all that happens. Page builders kind of take the editing experience to a different level. And I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So this is the Divi page builder. Divi is a theme that I use a lot. And see how different it, it looks from that. So all I want to point out is there's this thing called page builders. They take your site to another level. I'm not going to go deep into it because I don't think it's something that beginners necessarily need to do when they're first starting. Elementor is a page builder that Sydney prefers. So when you install the Sydney theme, it's going to ask you to put in the Elementor page builder. You can put it in, but you don't have to use it. Again, it's sort of taking things to the next level. So here in this example, I've got my words and a picture in here. I don't have to use the Elementor page builder, but if I did, it would look like this. So this is a different environment. The whole thing about WordPress is getting comfortable with the environments that you're in. Beaver Builder is another popular page builder. It's probably the most popular page builder. It's a plugin that you install. It's free, and they have a pro version. Same with Elementor. It's a plugin you install. And if you switch to it, then it would look something like this. So this would be the environment you would work in. No, they don't. Uh, you can. You can work in the normal WordPress editor, or you could use a page builder. So when it comes to learning WordPress, it's sort of like, do I, does my brain want to take on this new thing or not, or do I need it or not? So that's sort of how... That's the way I teach WordPress. It starts simple, you and you build up, and then you're like, hey, I think I want to try something different. And then you can use a page builder. You don't have to. I've been building WordPress, my site, working on my site for years, and I just use the normal editor because I haven't found that need. So it, it's kind of individual. How many people have heard of Gutenberg? Okay, most people. It's a new editing environment. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because Matt's going to do a session on Gutenberg. But it's something that's coming to WordPress. It is not out. It's out yet as a plugin if you want to play with it. Or you can wait. So it's up to you. But it's, again, an editing environment. You definitely do replace the classic 
I think eventually, but you will still be able to use the classic. So, you know, you'll just have to decide when you want to take that on. And there'll be other sessions about Gutenberg this weekend. I just want to show you what it looks like. So here is my About Us page in the Gutenberg editor. And you can always turn it off if you decide you don't like it or you don't want to take that on yet. It's up to you, but Matt will go deeper into that in his session. So customizing your theme with the theme options. When the term is used customize, when you hear that term, you have to be careful because sometimes people are talking about developers going into the back end and changing the back end code. I'm talking about just using the customizer, things that any beginner can do. And so now what I'm going to do is get out of PowerPoint. I'm going to go into a desktop server and um, come over here. All right, so I have a WordPress site and I've put some stuff into it. Let me go into the back end. So your site will look like this. Now at this point, you might not have any posts and you might not have any pages and that's okay. Um, but it is easier to start when you're building a site to have some stuff in there. Remember the clay that I talked about? So um, what I'm gonna do is before I switch to, let's see, I got 26 minutes. Before I switch to Sydney, I'm going to make a new post and I'm going to make a new page. So I'll start with a post and I'll call this test. And I'm going to put in, this is a test and I'm going to hit publish. So I recommend that you guys do the same thing is create and you can call it, you can name it whatever you want. You can put whatever amount of words you want in there. Then also I'm going to make a page and I'm going to say add new and I'm going to just put mission statement. This is my mission statement. And I'm going to click publish. So what what I'm supposed what I'm doing here today is going to be talking about the theme. So I'm not going to make a lot more. I already have some test posts in here. You probably have the sample page in the hello world. But you saw how fast I did that. Let me view it. It's just pretty simple. Now you might be thinking, well, Christina, my site doesn't look like this. That's because you probably have 2017 installed. When WordPress is installed, it'll come with some default themes. I built this a while ago, so I have some older ones, but you'll probably have 2017. So when I activate this, and I look at my site, this is probably what your site looks like, except you don't have pictures in there. Now, I don't recall, did they, did all the people here, Roy, have pictures installed in their site? I don't remember. It how. Their site, but it was about the password. So this part, uh, email, so Okay. Well, they don't, yeah, they don't have to go now. All right. So what I'm going to do is walk you through installing a, installing the Sydney theme. So I'm going to go to appearance themes and you can follow along with me if you'd like. Go to appearance themes and I'm going to click on the add new theme. So I'm going to click add new theme. Now here, WordPress at the top, 
there's featured, there's popular, what's popular, there's the latest theme. So there might be, as you work with WordPress, maybe there is a theme company you really like. They come out with a brand new theme, and even though only a few people are using it, you're already familiar with that company. So don't necessarily not install a theme only because it has a few people. Favorites are, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but if you have a WordPress.org account, you can... Um, heart things and make them your favorites so you can have a collection of favorites. But let's go to popular. I like to start with popular ones because that means a lot of people are using it. And let's scroll down to the Sydney theme. So I'm going to install that. And I'm going to activate it. So when you install and activate a theme, it's giving me these little messages. Welcome to Sydney. To get started, please visit our welcome page. And there's this Sydney info here. So getting started, read documentation, recommended actions, support free versus pro. So this says to me, wow, they put this in to make it easy for me to find stuff. This is great. I like this theme. So I can close that out. And then it says this theme recommends the following plugins. I usually go ahead and install the plugins the theme recommends. That means they've worked with it and your site's going to look more like their demo. It's going to be easier. So I'm going to click on begin installing plugins. And then I'll just click install let it install Elementor. Now I'm not going to use Elementor today. I'm just going to install it because the theme wants me to. And I'm going to install this. So now when I come to my plugins, I will see that I have Elementor and the Sydney Toolbox. None of these are active. So I got a bunch of plugins. They're not active. So what does that mean? You can have plugins in your site, but they're not activated yet. So they're just sort of hanging out there. They're not doing anything yet. In order for them to do something, you have to activate them. WordPress gives you the way to turn things on and off because sometimes if you've got a problem with something, you want to detect what is my problem. By turning things off, you can isolate what the problem is. So that's a little troubleshooting tip. But in another session, I think it's the next session, you'll be learning about plugins. So I've got Sydney activated. And I don't have it, I can dismiss this notice, I don't have them, uh, those other plugins activated yet. So let's look at the outside. All right, so, and let me go over to Sydney. And am I moving too fast? All right. Okay, where am I? So I've got a whole bunch of tabs up here. Who does tab browsing? Okay, a few. By having multiple tabs, so you, I'm in Firefox, and I can say File, New Tab, it lets me work on a bunch of different things at the same time. So it's kind of a, a shortcut. So here's the outside of my site. And remember what I said, you want to look at the demo site. So I have a new tab. I did file, new tab, and I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe I'll close that one. So I've got a bunch of tabs open. So when I'm working, I'm going back and forth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm at WordPress.org. I'll start from the beginning like was in my slides. Click on the themes and you can search or you can just type in Sydney. And up comes this theme. So this is the theme, finding a theme from WordPress.org. 
because that's where I go to evaluate it, and then I come inside my site to add it. So does that make sense? You go to one place to browse and then another place to install. And again, the reason why is I just like the bigger space. So I click more info and I'm looking for this theme homepage. So I'm going to the theme homepage. This was in my slide. Here's demo, here's download. You could download it from here, but I always prefer to do it from inside of WordPress. So now I'm gonna look at the demo. So the demo gives me a guide of what my site could look like. And this looks pretty nice. So I will go back and forth between the demo and my own site when I'm building something. All right, so I'm looking at my site and boy, gosh, that does not look like the demo. This is where people get stuck. They're like, I installed it, why doesn't it look like the demo? I must have done something wrong, I'm a failure. So you just gotta be patient with yourself at this part, at this point. So, I am going to go to the customizer and start getting things to look like the way I want them to. So, when you're building a site, you're going to be in that ugly duckling stage. So just be patient with yourself in the ugly duckling stage. So I'm going to first come to header area. So here's, I'm in the customizer and this is where I'm customizing my theme. So the general is, um, and each theme is gonna have different settings here when you get to the customizer. So just know that, but you'll start to get a familiarity with how things look. So I often like to start with a header area. Uh, you don't have to, you could start with homepage settings. So maybe I'll start with homepage settings. So uh, this is the thing about WordPress. When WordPress is first installed on the home page will be your blog posts. And so you may or may not want that. You might want a welcome page. Oh wait, I'm okay. I'm in the wrong. I've got two. I've got two test sites up here. And yeah, I don't think I want to use this one. Let me get out. So I'm going to hold on. This is what I want. Dashboard. <coughs> themes. All right. Let me right. Okay. Go to the dashboard. Does everybody have Sydney installed? Okay. So I'm going to the customizer and instead of, I'm going to go down to home page settings. Every theme will have this option. Do you want your latest blog posts or do you want a static page? So I'm going to pick a welcome page and you might be thinking, well, Christina, I don't have a welcome page. I had just created that before. So I can show you who wants me to walk through creating a page? Yeah. Um, like that? Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to set the home page to be a welcome page, and I need to set my post page to something. So let me just click publish. Yeah, I'm going to create a page right now. So here's the, the thing about WordPress. If you don't want your blog on the homepage, how many people don't want their blog on the homepage? 
a few, okay. If you don't want your blog on the home page, you need to create a place to put all those blog posts. And so I'm gonna come to pages, look at all pages, and I'm gonna create a page which will be a container for my blog. This is a little bit of a mind twist for, for some people. So just put the word blog and then I'm going to say blog will go here. And I'm going to click publish. And I'm going to view this. So what am I doing? I've got Sydney installed. I haven't customized it yet. And I'm realizing that I need to have a container to hold all those blog posts if you're not going to have it on the home page. I hope this makes sense. Again, if it doesn't, just kind of keep going with it. Like, oh, I don't know what Christina's doing. How do we get from the customizer back? back to normal. I will demonstrate that again. Thank you. So I'm going to go back into the customizer. If you don't see it up here, then you're in an area where it's just not visible up here. You can always come to Appearance Customize. When you're learning WordPress, I recommend finding things in here. And then when you get spiffy and fast, you can start doing shortcuts. So Appearance, Customize. So when you get into Customizer, now you're in this environment and it can be disorienting. So when you, you either publish if you made changes or you click this X on the upper left and it gets you back. So appearance, customize, I'm going into the customizer and then X if I want to get out. So I'm going to go to home page settings. I set my home page to be this welcome page and I just created a page that says welcome page and I put some dummy text in there. I can talk about that in a minute. I need to select where my posts are going to go. So it's, I'm selecting blog. If you don't like that name blog, you can change it later. And I'm going to click publish up here. So now, let me X this out. Let me look at my site. So this is that disorienting ugly duckling stage where not everything is set up and I can't find where that blog post went because I don't have a menu. Hey, so Roy, I wasn't planning on doing all this but I'm realizing that I need to do this demo so I'm just going to kind of keep going with it. Okay, good. So I need and let me right click and open in a new tab. So here's my site. It looks nothing like this, right? I'm in that ugly duckling stage, so I'm just going to keep going. I need a menu, and it looks like it's given a shortcut. Create your menu here. Now, not all themes do that. So I'm going to stick with the standard way of doing things, because then it'll be easy for you to follow if you're using another theme. So I'm going to come to Appearance, Menus. And I'm going to create a new menu. I already have one here, but why don't I delete this menu and then I can start fresh. I'll delete that menu. Okay, so menus are like your top navigation or your sidebar navigation. And you want to have menus and you can change them around. You can have lots of different menus. So there's no menu here and it usually comes up with something called menu one and it has things in here. These are my pages that I already have. So let me just say over here, can you see this create new menu? Yeah. I'm going to create a new menu. <coughs> um, oh no, I didn't want to go there. I'm going to say create new menu and I'm going to call it top menu. The name you give your menu is just for you. It's to help you know what it is. So I recommend naming it footer menu, top menu, sidebar menu, so you can keep track of it in your brain. So this will be my top menu. 
So I'm going to type it in and I'm going to click Create Menu. And now I want to add stuff to it. Now, you might not have a lot of posts or pages yet. That's okay. Just add what you have. Here there's Most Recent, View All, and Search. As you get a lot of content, this will get really busy. So I'm going to have my welcome page, FAQ, I'll put my blog, contact us and about us, and I'm going to say add to menu. So now I have these menu items. Let me move things around. So you can just click and drag to move things around. This will make more sense. I want to click save menu once you see it. So I created my menu and now let's look at the outside. So are you following me? We're on one tab, I'm on the inside and one tab, I'm on the outside. Is everybody following me? Raise your hand if you're following me. Okay, most, most people are. Let me know if you're not. So I'm gonna hit refresh and you think, wait, what happened? I created a menu, why do I not see it at the top? Common error happens all the time. <coughs> Once you create the menu, you have to tell WordPress to use it. So just remember that. You can create lots of menus, but you got to tell WordPress, okay, I created this menu, now I want to use it. So you come to Manage Locations. I'm under Appearance Menus. You come to Manage Locations, and now I have to say, oh, this is the menu I want to use, this top menu. And I'll click Save Changes. So now let's hit refresh, and I'm still not seeing my menu. Ah, there it is. I had to scroll. So that's how this theme works. I had to scroll, because I don't have yet that big slider in here. And some people love sliders, some people hate sliders. If you like them, great. If you don't like them, that's fine too. So. The way this theme works is when I scroll, now I see my menu. Now maybe I want my menu to look a little different. I'm going to leave that for now. So just remember as you're building a site, there's lots of things that have to happen and everybody's going to be a little bit different in how they like to work. So I work on things and then I come back to it. I just wanted to show you this blog tab. This blog tab now is displaying my posts. Now I put pictures in ahead of time. You might not have your pictures in. Did everybody get all those assets? So pictures can come. So let me get back to the customizer. See now I see this customizer here. So I will shortcut into the customizer. Now wait, let me, uh, I think I'm going to go back out for a minute. Often when I'm building a site, I often design the home page uh, last, just because I find it's easier. And the way you get to your home page is you click on the title, or if you put a logo up here in the upper left, that's how you get to the main part of your site. And mine has this welcome page. But sometimes I find it's easier to work on the design on the inside and do the home page last. Everybody's going to be different. I find that easier because when I'm building a site, the process of putting together the pages helps you get more clarity on what is this site about. When you first land to a site, you want people to immediately be able to figure out what kind of site this is. And by doing my about us, mission statement, putting my content in, that helps me get more clear. But a lot of people do like to start with a home page because that's the first thing that people see. So the About Us page has this nice header that disappears when I scroll down. And so let's go to the customizer. I think I want to change that header. So I'm going to go to Header Area, Header Types. So here's where you can decide what your header should look like. Again, in the customizer, this is going to be different for each theme. So I could have a full screen slider, or I could have an image, or I could have no header, only menu. So let's click on that and click Publish. 
and I'm going to visit this site. So now my welcome page looks like this. See how just like the, the potter with the clay, I'm kind of building things up to kind of keep myself oriented to what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So I want to put an image and let me come back. That's the header type telling it what the header is. Let's click on header slider and let me click on select an image. Now I could stop and take time and go read the documentation. I tend to be a little bit more like a cowboy. I just kind of like bang away at stuff and then if I get stuck I go look at the documentation. <clears throat> you might be different. You might want to look at the documentation first. So in order for time here I'm not looking at the documentation first, but that's usually the way I build things. I just try it, and then when I get stuck, I go the documentation. Everybody's different. So I'm going to pick one of these images. I'll pick this one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, put a, a couple of slides in here. I want to go back to publish. And let's hit refresh. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> I'm back at the header media, and I'm going to this was the image that I was looking for. So sometimes when you're working on things, you get in the wrong place, you just keep clicking around till you find what you're looking for. So header media, I wanna change this image. So I'm gonna click add new image and I'll put this up, select and crop. I'll just let it crop the way it wants to, hit crop image, and I'm going to click publish. And let me hit refresh. So now I have this header here as my header media, and this is the same header on different pages. Oops, let me get out of here. Does anybody have any questions on what I've done so far? Or do you want me to just keep going? No? Keep going? Keep going. I want to point out um, a couple of things that are handy to have. Pixabay is a place that I like to go to to get pictures. There's lots of different places to get pictures. I know Bridget got the pictures in the assets in Unsplash. Um, that's another place to go, but you can just come here and type in uh, anything, so flowers, and there's all kinds of images. And, um, you know, maybe I'll take this image. And what's great about these is free for commercial use, no attribution required. So I'll just click free download. I usually download large ones, but I think I'll download a small one. And I'll just say download. And this is saving a picture. So Pixabay free that you can, um, um, they do have ads there to get you to buy um, paid paid pictures, but I usually get a lot of my pictures from Pixabay. They're free, it's easy, no attribution. See, you can see it. I don't have to think about it. That's why I like Pixabay. Um, sometimes, depends, like, 
I might put, I might install them large. It depends how I'm going to use them, but you usually want to downsize, you usually want to shrink them down outside of WordPress. WordPress, when you upload, will make smaller versions, but sometimes it's easier to manage if you shrink them outside. So in this instance, I'm going to Pixabay to get a picture, and I'm clicking the, I'm looking at the licensing, and then I'm clicking free download, and so that I don't have to take the step of making it smaller, I'm picking a small one. And then I could come back later and download a bigger one if I want. So if you see a picture you think you like, you might want to download both. Some people have Photoshop or different ways to resize. I don't want to take the time now to resize a picture. All right, so here's my pedaling pedals, and I know the other teachers are going to go into more of customizing this. I want to get back into the customizer, and I want to talk more about it. So uh, blog options gives you different layouts. Often with the pro version, it might give you more choices. Uh, masonry is something I really like. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a design draft. <clears throat> you know, there's so many things I want to teach you, and I don't have time to do it all, but hopefully by the end of the day we'll get there. Roy, will you just let me know how much more time I have? Because I have that I'm out of time, but... Let me know. I should keep going because I can. Ten more minutes? Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, I'm building a site and I'm kind of meandering about. That's just the way I build sites. I kind of meander about. What I'm going to show now is the design draft. So let me let me get X out, I'm going to go back. Who's heard of the design draft before? Nobody. Awesome. All right, let me look. go look at the blog. So here's now what my blog looks like, and I've previously put pictures in, and maybe I will add another picture so I can show you how to do that. So I'm jumping around a little because I'm realizing you guys need some more things that I hadn't anticipated. So here I have a test, and um, somebody give me a woman's name. Jane. Jane. Okay. So I'm going to write a test blog post called Jane's Favorite Flowers. And so Jane's favorite flowers, and I'm just going to click update. I had previously named it test when I made this blog post, and I renamed it James, Jane's favorite flowers. So I'm going to, I don't like this word test in here, so I'm going to just change the URL to Jane, Jane favorite This part I'm doing now is not super key. I just wanted to show you that if you make a blog post or a page with a name and you decide to rename it and you don't like the way it looks, the URL, you can click this edit button and give it another name. Just know you don't want spaces, so instead of spaces, put those dashes. All right, if you didn't grasp this, don't worry about it. Again, just always keep moving forward. So Jane's favorite flowers, but there's no content here. So what designers do is they put in what's called Latin text. Who, heard, who here's heard that term, Latin text? It says lorem, ipsum, you've probably seen it. It's Latin text. It's a placeholder. But there's other more fun places to get Latin text, like Batman. So there's a site, Batman Ipsum, and it will give you Batman text. So there's also Cupcake Ipsum, Coffee Ipsum, uh, Bacon Ipsum. Did you make that, Roy? No, but it's a WordPress community. Uh, bacon Ipsum. So 
Let's show of hands. Who wants me to do Batman or Bacon? How many for Batman? How many for Bacon? It's kind of 50-50. I'll go with I'll go with uh, Bacon Ipsum. Both. All right, I'll do that. So Bacon I P S U M I P S U M dot com. Pretty much, if you if you type in a word and add I P S U M dot com, you might find it. So Bacon Ipsum. When I first learned about this, I was rolling on the floor laughing. So I want five paragraphs. You can have all meat and filler. Should I do all meat or all meat and filler? <laughs> all meat. Okay, we'll leave out the filler. Oh, make it spicy. I haven't seen that. Okay. And then you click give me bacon. So what is this doing? It's just giving you text words. Because when you're building a site, you're trying to block things out. You don't want to get hung up on, oh, what are my words supposed to be? Just copy this and paste it in. So I'm pasting this in. Bacon Ipsum, I can get rid of this as a test. All right, so where am I and what am I doing? You always want to ask yourself that because it's easy to get disoriented. I am edit, I'm creating this blog post and I'm viewing the post. All right, so what have I done? I've made a blog post, Jane's Favorite Flowers. I can see all my blog posts here, but I want it to have a, a nice picture when it shows up. So Jane's Favorite Flowers, and I want to add a picture in here. So I'm going to edit this post. Am I going too fast? No, okay. So I want to add a picture. So I'm going to click on this Add Media. And these are images that are in my media library. So your media library is the part of WordPress that holds all the pictures you've put in there. So I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to click Upload Files. And I'm going to now click Select and I'm going to browse on my computer and find that picture, Flower Child. So I'm going to click on it and say Open. So here's Jane, and now I'm going to say Insert into Post. So now I have a picture. I know I did that a little fast, and if I have, okay, I've got till 11 or till 10 after 11. Okay. Okay. So let's, I like to do things and then click update and look at it. So I like to do things and look at it, do things and look at it. That's how I work because then if I make a mistake, I know what was the last thing I did. If you do 10 things and then hit update and you've got a mess, then you have to remember what were the 10 things. So this is just my habit of working. It's like I do something and then I look at it and then I go back in and edit and that's how I learn that's how I learn that's how I learn WordPress. All right, so I've got Jane but the formatting is not looking really great. So let's edit this. See if you're logged in, you'll see this top toolbar. Other people won't see this. Only you see it cuz you're the administrator. So I'm going to come edit. Now if I select the picture there are these little alignment icons. Can you see those? I think I will align left. That looks pretty good. And I'll click update. And let me view the post. So now I've got my post. There's Jane's favorite flowers. Article, um, the article is here. And leave a reply. This is if I want comments. So if you want people to comment on your blog, <clears throat> you have that comment thing. If you don't, you turn it off and you're like, wait, oh, why can't I, wait, where is it? How can I turn that off? Here's a key. This is a mistake a lot of people make, so listen up. See these screen options? <coughs> it's up here. Every part of WordPress will have screen options, so it'll look different depending upon where you're at. 
you want to turn these things on so they're visible in the editor. You can turn on author if you've got more authors. You know, you can you can turn a lot of things on, see your revisions. Once I turn that on, I can see I've got a bunch of different revisions. <clears throat> so if I make a mistake, I can go back. Excerpt I'm not going to talk about now. See, here's the thing. If you see something in WordPress and you're like, I don't know what that is, just ignore it. Same with plugins. Just, just ignore it and keep moving. Because sometimes there's things, like let me turn custom fields. Custom fields are down here. They're for the programmers and coders. They're not for beginners. So just ignore custom fields. Remember, the great thing about WordPress is it's designed for beginners and Fortune 500 companies who've got a slew of programmers and designers working. And this is why I'm so passionate about WordPress is the person starting out, the one-man band, the solo entrepreneur, the consultant, can build their site with WordPress and your site can grow and you could become a Fortune 500 company. It has that capability. Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace don't. You're going to hit a brick wall with those platforms. Do not use them. Stay with WordPress and your business can grow and you can go simple to huge. So that's my passion thing about WordPress. Okay, so now now that I turned on this, so this I'm pointing this out because beginners make this mistake. Now that I have it visible, now I can say I don't want any comments. And I'm not going to talk about trackbacks, so you can just ignore that. So I don't want any comments on this blog post. Now you may want com comments, you might not, but see now the comment box is gone. All right, so let's get back to the blog because I'm teaching about customizing it. I put that picture in, but it's not showing here, but the pictures I previously done are showing up on the outside of the blog. So what this is, is the blog is the collection of blog posts. To get to the blog post, I have to click on the title. So right now, what, I'm wanna, what I want to teach to you about now, which is really important, this, because this is a mistake I see a lot of beginners make, is they don't set the featured image. Who here has already set your featured image? I'm expecting not too many. Okay, just a few. I got five more minutes. So, oops, that went too fast. Let me do that again. What I'm about to teach you applies to pages and posts. I recommend always setting the featured image because the theme is going to use the featured image in cool ways that you don't know about yet. So often people are like, why is my site not look cool like the demo? It's because you didn't set your featured image. So how do I do that? I know I've only got five minutes. Come down here to the right, click set featured image. So I'm going to set that to be Jane. So now I'm going to set it. The featured image could be a different image. So the featured image just tells WordPress of this article or this page, I might have a lot of pictures, but the featured image, the one that I want to highlight that sort of represent what, what it's about, I'm setting it. So you only set one featured image and here it is. And then I'm going to click update. So now when I view my post, the way the theme is using the featured image is it's placing it at the top. So I might remove this or move it down. So it's in there twice. It's common when you're building a site, you're going to have things in there twice. Don't let that rattle you. So I'm, I'm getting back here to this blog. So now, I've got the blog post, it has a collection of these things, but I want to customize, let me visit the site, let me go over here. I work in tabs so I can see my before and afters. So I'm coming back to the customizer, and I've just really scratched the surface of the customizer. Um, let's go to blog options. 
I want, I really like masonry layouts. Did you see it change? Let me go back to classic. So there's classic, there's the masonry. So masonry now shows it in, in a grid. And I'm going to click publish. And let me X out. So now here's my welcome page. I still haven't customized that as much as I want. But now my blog, because the featured image is set, See, Hello World is not showing anything because I didn't put a featured image there. So now this is, this is starting to look nice. I have titles in here, but this is all demo, uh, uh, demo content. So here's the bacon ipsum, here's Lauren ipsum. So do you see how the process of building a site, it's like that clay, it all sort of starts to come together? The, Last thing I want to show you before I leave is coming back into, so here's the before where it's just in a line and then here's the after. What I want to show you in the customizer is the design draft. Because what's nice about this design draft is, um, let's see, I can change colors. Uh, maybe I'll make that blue. If you change something in here and click on these little gears up here, you can click Save Draft. And now what you have is a second version of your site. Here's the link to it. So you can click Copy. And I can go over here and click Paste. Uh, I was in the wrong, wrong to, I'm going to kill that. Okay. I was in the wrong place. Come over here. Come to colors, general, primary color. And sometimes you're like, I don't know what this is. What is this primary color? Sometimes I just click on things. I'm doing it again. And I'm going to click save draft. And now I'm copying this link of this design draft. So that's copied. I have two test sites up in two tabs and that's why it looks confusing. So I'm trying to find where that... I'm looking for a read more. Okay, so that color is the post comment. So let me go to the blog and your wedding day flowers. So here was the old color. So here is the URL to my site because it's server press, it has this name. Here is the design draft. So if you had this installed on your own site, you could then send this link to a friend and say, hey, which version do you like better? So this was just a simple one where the um, color, yeah, here, should see how these, this is purple colors, and this one is the sort of the peachy ones. So this is really useful in the customizer, the design draft. You can only have one design draft. Then if you like it, you can publish those changes. So it's really handy also if you're working with clients. You can say, you know, here's this version and here's this version. Which do you like better? So I'm sorry that I'm out of time, but we're just getting rolling. It's only 11 o'clock here on the beginner's day. Again, my name is Christina Hills. My website is the Website Creation Workshop, and I'll be here all day, and I will be here tomorrow. I'm also teaching a beginner session Sunday morning, too, if you want to come to that. So thank you. Thanks, Christina.